Happy New Year. I know that's different than my usual. Happy New Year and welcome. Today we are celebrating Epiphany. And if that is a mystery to you, it's maybe actually honestly a mystery to a lot of us. Um, But more will be revealed during the service itself. Um, You all may have hopefully received the, the hymn that we're going to sing at the end of worship. The first line was printed twice in the bulletin, so you should have an extra page. And if you don't have an extra page, try to get the attention of an usher and they will give you an extra page so that we can all be on the same page at the end of worship. How about that? Um, You're invited to fill out the worship slips on the front of your bulletin. Let us know how you would like to connect. There's multiple opportunities to do so. Those can go in the offering plates as the offering plates go by during the offering. And um, also let us know if there's something that we can pray for you about or someone that you care about. We would love to include them or you in our congregation's prayers today. Next week, after this service, we will have a lunch and learn um, that will include the, the last year's ministry and also this coming year's ministry budget. Should be a fun time. I will be there. And if you would like to learn more, um, that will help us as we have the congregational meeting the following week, um, kind of get people briefed and, and updated on what we're doing with the budget for this year. So please come and be a part of that. And then I invite you to join me and Augustana's Human Dignity Delegates at the Marade a week from tomorrow in celebration of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday. I've done that several times. It's wonderful. You can come just simply listen to the opening speakers there at City Park. You can join us for the walk. And you can conclude down at um, Civic Center Park where there's more celebrations if you choose to do that. That option is included on that worship slip, so you can take a peek there. And now, I invite you to stand and greet one another as we begin our worship. I invite you to remain standing as we speak a word of confession on the front of our worship bulletin and hear a word of God's good forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, We confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you have called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us, that we may bathe in the glory of your Son, born among us, and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in this good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ, and inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. pray. O oh God, on this day you revealed your Son to the nations by the leading of a star. Lead us now by faith to know your presence in our lives and bring us at last to the full vision of your glory through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For, dark, for darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together, they come to you. Your sons shall come from far away and your daughters shall be carried on their nurse's arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you. Young camels of Median and Ephah, all those camels from Sheba shall come. They shall be gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. The word of the Lord.
The second reading comes from Ephesians. This is the reason that I, Paul, am a prisoner for Christ Jesus for the sake of you Gentiles. For surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given to me for you, and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I wrote above in a few words, a reading of which will enable you to perceive my understanding of the mystery of Christ. In former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have now have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, and sharers in the same promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel, I have become a servant, according to the gift of God's grace that was given to me by the working of his power. Although I am the very least of all saints, this grace is given to me to bring the Gentiles the news of the boundless riches of Christ, and to make everyone see what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things, so that through the church, the wisdom of God in its rich variety might, might now be made known to the rulers and authorities of, in the heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose that he has carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have access to God in fullness and confidence through faith in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and we have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child and when you have found him, bring me words that I may go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Thank you for that beautiful song. Are there other children who would like to join us? Please come on up.
So what are we celebrating today? Epiphany. Epiphany. We just had a big party downstairs, didn't we? Some of you have crowns. Some of you have beads. Did somebody find the baby Jesus in the king's cake? We all did. You all did. <laughs> That's a... Well, you, you, they had a, a scavenger hunt. And where was baby Jesus? In the chapel. In the chapel. How cool is that? Well, I want to tell you a little bit, another story. When uh, my husband and I lived in another city in Europe called Vienna, one day we heard children about your age singing. And we looked out the window, and they were dressed all in white, white robes like the choir wears. And they were carrying a pole, and hanging off of it was a star. And so we had to find out what this was about. Well, they were, it was like Christmas caroling, only it was epiphany caroling. And they would go door to door and knock on the door, and people would give them treats, give them cookies. And then they would ask, the singers would ask for a donation for caroling. Just a minute, I'll get to you. So um, they would ask for a donation, and then that money would go to a children's organization to help children who were in need. And if they gave money, they would write a blessing above the door. And it says this, 20, and what's that? Plus, or a cross, and then that, C, why do you think 2024? Because it's the year 2024. Very good. And then the CMB can stand, it's two different ways they look at it, that it can stand for the Latin phrase that says, Christ bless this house, or it's the, uh, the traditional name of the three wise men. And it's Casper, Melchior, and Balthazar. And so then that's written. When, did any of you see the chalk above the doors when you came in? Yay, some of you did. My husband and I were here yesterday, and we talked, and we said a prayer over the church. And, um, and so you'll have that this year until it gets washed off. But it's just a special thing to do. That, um, and I have an invitation for, oh, I forgot. I brought this for you to see the three wise men, the three kings. I was taking down my tree yesterday and thought, oh, I'll bring that. That's pretty. But in these bags... Each of you, it's kind of gold, like a king's bag. And there's a piece of chalk, and there's this information with the epiphany blessing. And so when you go home, your family can chalk above your door and say the little prayer for your house and for your family this year. How does that sound? And if there's more, you adults can grab one too. So let's pray. Dear God, thank you. For sending, for sending the wise men to show us, to show us the, love God. the love of God. We love you, Lord. Thank you for loving us first. Amen. Thank you so much. So if you want to grab a little bag here. There are different colors. The promise of Christmas, of good news, of great joy for all people, of a light that shines in the darkness and cannot be overcome, is eclipsed ever so slightly by the celebration of Epiphany today. Epiphany is a celebration of divine light that reveals Jesus and who God is through Jesus. 
We move from a baby in a manger to a toddler on his mother's lap. We move from shepherds, angels, and animals to magnificent magi priests from the east. You know, sure, our nativity scenes and Christmas pageants compress time and include the magi in the birth story. That makes total sense. The magi following a star and worshiping the toddler Jesus embody the Christmas promise. Jesus is such good news of great joy for all people that even the magi came to see for themselves. Magi is the Greek word for the people named wise men in our gospel reading today. These magi are likely, for, are likely from what is now Western Iran, but what used to be called Babylon in the Persian Empire thousands of years ago. The Magi were from a tradition that read stars and interpreted dreams. They were from the place where the Jews had been held in exile hundreds of years before Jesus until King Cyrus of Persia freed them and sent them back to Jerusalem. The Magi came from a place with their own history and their own religious practices. And when they saw Jesus' star at its, at its rising, the King of the Jews' star, the time had come to bring him gifts and pay him homage. Consistent with Jesus' story even before birth, the good news of great joy for all people was now revealed to the most unlikely people, stargazers and dreamers from the land that once held Jews captive. The Magi enter the story and continue to teach us what God may be up to in this very special birth. The 12 days of Christmas are over and we pause on Epiphany to remember the Magi and even celebrate them. We're so used to the story that it's kind of fun to remember just how crazy this story is. The exotic magi priests from the east follow a star and showed up in Jerusalem asking about the king of the Jews, which frightened King Herod and all of Jerusalem with him, our reading says. King Herod, not the last politician to play at being religious, called for the magi to hear their story and then asked that they report back to him so that he could also pay homage to the child king. A lie with a deadly goal. This is the same King Herod who, in the verses just following our story today, unleashed a murderous rampage on Bethlehem that killed all the boys under two years old. He was a scared, cruel king who did scary, cruel things. Thankfully, the Magi escaped his clutches. This is no bedtime story. The Magi's story is a subversive one. They are a good reminder that God is interested in people outside of our in-group, sometimes calling them by the stars. The Magi give gifts and pay homage to a toddler Jesus whose mother sang about a God who topples tyrants and feeds the hungry a God whose mercy is known across the generations. This, this God's radical grace and expansive love revealed in Jesus was seen as a threat. How could it not be? The Magi's gifts to Jesus drew their loyalty to Jesus, so much so that they were willing to risk death by avoiding King Herod on their way out of Bethlehem. Unfortunately, the upcoming national election in 2024 cannot be similarly avoided. Although the election has nothing on the drama that played out between Jesus, Herod, and the Magi, it's setting up to be a doozy of a year for us. Yet the Magi story gives us a place to begin our thinking and engage our faith before we get drawn into the ugliness of what's to come, before we get scared, and before we become cruel without even realizing it. In just a few short chapters after the Magi's story, as an adult, 
likely bearded Jesus, teaches his disciples about being merciful peacemakers, not glossing over issues of justice, but encouraging them to hunger and thirst for righteousness. In the spirit of being claimed by the light of Christ this epiphany, while avoiding the trap of Christian nationalism, 60 Plus Ministry is hosting a four-week series for all adults called Coffee Talk, Examining Faith and Citizenship. The details are in your announcement page. And like the Magi, we could wait for directions to come to us in a dream, but it may be a good idea to have a daytime in-person option just in case. Just saying. Another opportunity to see what God may be up to in Jesus comes next Sunday during worship. Professor Harry Waters Jr., whose parents Harry and Betty are members of our congregation, will preach part of a sermon from Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in honor of his birthday. The full version of that sermon is Baptist preaching long, so Professor Waters has taken great care to distill it down into the main things. We're very grateful for that. Reverend King spoke and preached often about racial equality, care for the poor, and nonviolence. He prioritized, prioritized nonviolence to subvert scary, cruel systems and create change for black folks and so that we may all be free from the bondage of racism sin. He preached from Augustana Sanctuary pulpit right here that's a trip, isn't it? Reverend Dr. King preached right here in 1962 during Holy Week services. Professor Waters' time with us includes a class between worship services to lead us in wrestling with Reverend King's faith and theology and to wrestle with our own faith and theology. Our faith is a gift. It is a pure gift. Perhaps it's a fragile one for you today. Is it any wonder that faith can be a struggle with so much suffering and so much violence in our world, not the least of which centers around modern day Jerusalem, Bethlehem, and the Holy Land? Pausing, being together today to, separate epif to celebrate Epiphany allows our faith to keep time differently because of a God who continues to be allows, sorry, pausing to celebrate Epiphany allows our faith to keep time differently because of a God who continues to be, despite our doubts and questions, in the face of horrific violence. The Magi help us to do so. They help us hang on to it as they embody more than the sweet scenes in our nativities and the glittery gold bottles carried by children in Christmas pageants. Those magi subverted the power of a tyrant king, buying time for a small, holy child to grow up and shine light on more than anyone bargained for. A child who lived, died, and resurrected as good news of great joy for all people. Alleluia and amen.
You may be seated. In baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father frees us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are reborn children of God and made members of the church, the body of Christ. Living with Christ in the communion of saints, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. Katie and Justin, called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have Jackson baptized into Christ? If so, answer by saying, I do. I do. As you bring Jackson to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with these responsibilities to live with him among God's faithful people, bring him to the word of God and the Holy Supper, teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, place in his hands the Holy Scriptures, nurture him in faith and prayer so that he may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help Jackson grow in the Christian faith and life? If so, answer by saying, I do, and I ask God to help me. I do, and I ask God to help me. Sponsors, do you promise to nurture Jackson in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's spirit and to help him live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? If so, by answer by saying, I do, and I ask God to help me. People of God, I invite you to stand once more. People of God, do you promise to support Jackson and pray for him in his new life in Christ? If so, answer by saying, we do, and we ask God to help us. We do, and we ask God to help us. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, to reject sin and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our praise. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters. And by your word, you created the world, calling forth life, in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. And through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit the power of your living word, that the one who is washed in the waters of baptism be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. You ready? Okay, Dad's going to put you over. Okay. Good job, buddy. Jackson Seba, you are baptized in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good job. There you go. That's for you. You can dry your head. Yeah. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth. Cleanse them from sin and raise them to eternal life. I'm just going to put my hand on them. I'm just going to touch you, okay? 
Sustain Jackson Seba with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. You're not going to touch your head right here, okay? Jackson Seba, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. And now I'm going to invite Max to light the baptismal candle. This candle celebrates the light of Christ. We light it off the Jesus candle, also called the Paschal candle. And this candle can be lit every year on this day to remember all, the, all of you who are with him and celebrating him with, and the light of Christ in his life. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. And now I invite you to stand once more as we sing to the baptized. early Bible, yeah, putting the word of God in his hands, and the baptism certificate, and you can keep the little cloth, too, that goes on his head, and re return to your seats. Thank you. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> and we'll continue with the prayers. In gratitude that God's good news of great joy is for all people, we offer our prayers on behalf of the church, our neighbors in need, and the world God loves. Lord God, creator of all that is, we give you thanks and praise for each day that we get to live in your marvelous creation, which provides and sustains all life. Teach us how to tend rather than exploit what you have provided. Hear us, O God. Lord Jesus, the Magi sought you out, recognizing your kin kingship among the nations of the earth. Humble the hearts of your faithful people that we seek to be servants of your gospel. Give us boldness and faith that our lives make the good news of Christ's birth known to all people. Hear us, O God. Holy Spirit, enter into the hearts of all who would commit violence, be it in our homes, our community, or the nations of the world. Open their hearts to compassion and repentance. Enter into the lives of all victims of violence, protecting them, healing them, and granting them justice, not vengeance. Today, we especially include the students and staff of Perry High School and the Perry community. Hear us, O oh God. Holy Spirit, we pray for all who travel this week on our Synod's immersion trip to the Alabama Civil Rights, Civil Rights Historic Trail. Bless the leadership of Pastor Barbara and Deacon Shanna. Keep all safe from harm as they learn more about the history of this nation's struggles towards freedom for all. Hear us, O oh God. Mercy, Heavenly Father, as you rejoiced at the baptism of your son, we too rejoice in the baptism of Jackson Jordan with his parents, Katie and Justin, and his many grandparents. Guide him through, the, through life with a strong faith, loving you and serving those in need. Hear us, O oh God. Mercy. 
Lord, we pray for all who are injured or ill. Instill in them a hope for a better tomorrow and grant them strength, healing, and comfort. We pray especially for Ashley, Ron, Joanne, Diane, Lori, Sandy, Wes, Arlene, and Jerry. Hear us, O oh God. Gracious Jesus, in love you have redeemed the lives of your faithful departed. Console all who mourn the loss of loved ones with reassurance that they are with you. We pray especially for the family and friends of Don Pace, Norma Williams, Dolly Lager, and Esther Johnson. Hear us, O God. Abide with us, O God of mercy, and receive our prayers according to your abundant grace. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share that peace with one another.
us pray. Blessed are you, O God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us human beings and guide us on our journey. Lead us to your table, nourish us with this heavenly food, and prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Christ our light. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray that prayer the Lord has taught us. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. You may be seated. A word of instruction um, to let you know the bread is gluten free. There is wine and grape juice uh, available. The grape juice is lighter, the wine is the darker. The ushers will bring you forward and we'll do it as continuous. So you'll get the bread from either Pastor Caitlin or myself, and then you'll go to the next station and receive. Uh, the wine or the grape juice, and then you put your little cups in the basket. If you're joining us at home, please also gather your items. You can use wine, grape juice, crackers, bread, and please join with us in communion. If you would like to receive a blessing, cross your arms when you come forward, and we are glad to pray with you. If you need us to bring communion to you, just let the usher know, and we're glad to do that as well. The most important thing to know is that this is not my table. This is not the table of Augustana Lutheran Church or even of the ELCA. This is the Lord's table and all are invited, all are welcome to come and receive this grace. Amen.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace from today to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all. Strengthen with the richness of your grace in your Son, of Jesus Christ. Amen. God, who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you and who calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in today and forever. Amen. Go in peace and hope.